uh, some funding mechanisms. And what we're hoping to do today is to launch a proposal for consideration of council that actually marries a funding proposal to a longer-term vision for transit, but also identifies certain priorities for investment so people can see that their money is being spent wisely. And we're trying to create that value proposition for people across the entire city. So this funding plan actually is, uh, came out of the work that was done by the expert panel in March. And when they looked at, when we asked them to report back to council on the merits of a, of a Shepherd Subway versus a Shepherd LRT, we also asked them to look at funding. And one of their conclusions was that yes, we needed dedicated funding, we needed a broader vision for transit. And actually one of the recommendations out of that report was that we consider something like this uplift model. So let me talk a little bit about what that is. Some of you that are familiar with the reassessment process as it is know that every few years the impact does a reassessment of all, that, of all property values across residential classes. And right now that reassessment process is revenue neutral. So if property values go up by 5%, the mill rate goes down by 5%, as we can see on the slide. So this year what we expect in the fall is that the reassessment process will occur. We expect property values will go up conservatively by about 4.7%. And what we're proposing is that instead of having the process be revenue neutral, that part of that uplift, part of that increase in property value, get dedicated back into a transit fund, specifically for the purposes of building transit. And it makes sense because we know that the single most important contributor to rising property values is the ability of transit close by, or is the availability of transit. So it makes sense to have property values invest in transit because it, again, as you build transit, you're increasing property values, you're building a city, you're investing in your city, you're reducing gridlock, and you're creating one city. So that there is a logic to having a property tax base invest in transit. Now, we know that no taxes are, are, are welcome, and we know that our challenge will be creating the value proposition for this tax. And that's why we want to bring forward a plan and a vision so that people know, yes, this is something that I think I can invest in. So as we talk about the model, just before we go to the next slide, as you can see, typically under the reassessment process, the mill rate would get pushed down to 0.53%. What we're proposing is the mill rate still get pushed down, but it just not get pushed down quite as much, and that the dedicated portion of those funds get put into a transit fund. And so what does this mean? What will this mean for the fund? So the first year, in 2013, if successfully implemented, the city could collect $68 million into the fund. It's a cumulative amount that goes up each year to the fourth year, where it becomes $272 million and it stays at $272 million for as long as we want to keep the fund going. But what that does, it actually allows the city to plan and invest in transit. And it, next slide. So our, our hope and our, what we believe is reasonable is that if we come to the table with some skin in the game, we can convince our other funding partners, the provincial and federal government, to also invest in transit. We know that this uplift model is not going to fund the entire $30 billion, but what we do know is that we will have a dedicated funding stream that will, we believe, encourage other, our other partners to invest in transit. And so what does this mean for the average house? The average household can expect to pay, if this is approved by, by council, approximately $45 per year. Once again, it is cumulative, so the next year it would be 90, then 135, and then 180. It is equivalent to approximately 1.9% property tax increase a year. But what is unique about this model is that it is not subject to the annual budget approval at City Council every year. If we're successful in changing the legislation to allow us to keep a portion of this money and dedicate it into a transit fund, it will be separate and apart from the city's budgeting process. That will make it dedicated and independent. So the benefits of the One City Funding proposal. Currently, the reality is we don't have a transit plan beyond the four lines that were approved by council. And those four lines are a great start, but they don't go far enough to linking the city together. What we need to have is a vision for transit that brings transit to every part of the city. And it is a transit plan that's a combination of subway, light rail, streetcar, and buses. So bringing this plan forward, again, is part of the value proposition. Asking people to pay, they need to know what they're buying into. And that's what this plan is about. We currently don't have a dedicated city funding mechanism. And so we do rely on the whims of our partners to tell us what, pro what projects they feel are worthy to invest in. And we would like to change that conversation and say, no, there's projects that we think are important for this city that we're willing to invest in, and we believe that they're, we believe that they're important. The most, 
And the most important part of this funding proposal is it's dedicated funding, it's dependable, and it's debt free. And we believe those are the conditions under which we need to have in order to encourage the private sector to also invest in transit. Because we know bringing our private sector partners to the table is difficult if they don't have certainty in the projects that they're investing in. So this move will go a long way towards encouraging our private sector partners to come on board. So in summary, what is this plan? The longer term vision, six subway trains, six subway lines totaling 71 kilometers, 10 LRT lines totaling 73.5 kilometers, five bus and streetcar lines totaling 26 kilometers. What our hope is, we will bring transit to every corner of Toronto. We will eliminate the divide between the suburbs and the downtown. And we will build one city.